in the current year we have the prices and the quantities so the base year prices we call it as po and the base year quantity we call it as QO quantity index number quantity index number means Q1 will come first and then the price there are two methods of constructing index numbers the first one is the aggregate expenditure method second one is the family budget method hello everyone i'm purnima faculty in the department of commerce and management with the Ashram First Read College Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will be having a discussion on tests of adequacy. Now, let us see the what are the tests of adequacy for index numbers. In this, the first one is the time reversal test. The formula for calculating an index number should be such that it gives the same ratio between one point of comparison and other, no matter which of the two is taken as the base. Now, see in this index numbers, we have the base year and the current year. So, we we will be calculating the, uh, the value of the index numbers based on the base year and what are the changes for the current year. Now, the same way, the same formula should be applicable when you take the current year and have a comparison with the base year. That is, whenever we have a comparison between the two, whether it is the base year and the current year, the result should be the same. So, if it satisfies this condition, then that formula is very, very adequate. Then, second one is the factor reversal test. An index number should be such that it gives the same ratio even when there is interchange of price and quantity. So, for example, we have the last year's index number. Now, what is the formula for last year's index number? Last year's index number equals P O 1 equals sigma P 1 Q O by sigma P O Q O. So, this is the last year's index number. Now, what they are telling is even if we interchange the quantity with the price, that is the sigma q o p 1 by sigma q o p o into 100 both should be the same. That is what they mean. The factor reversal test says that this uh, whatever the result you get it should be the same. Then the next test is the unit test. It requires that the index number formula should be independent of the units in which the prices of quantities or commodities are quoted. That means whatever is the index number, it should not be dependent on the units. Suppose here the price is rupees and the quantity is in kgs or grams. So the index number should not be affected by the units of the uh, variables which we are taking. Then next one is the circular test. In this test, the index number should work in a circular fashion. For instance, an index constructed for the year 2005 with a base of 2004, another number on the base of 2003, it should be possible for us to get an index number for 2005 on the base of 2003. That is their product should be equal to 1. So, whenever we are having this kind of a index numbers, so whenever we construct an index number for the year 2005 with the base 2004, another with 3 with the base 5 and for 5 with the base 3, all the product should be equal to 1. Now, here we have one problem here. So, construct Fisher's index number with the given data. So, in the first uh, column, we have the commodities A, B, C, D and E. And in the next column, we have the base here. That is, the 2006 is considered as the base year and 2007 is considered as the current year. So, in the uh, base year, we have 6, 2, 4, 10, 8. In the quantity, we have 50, 100, 60, 30 and 40. In the current year, we have the prices and the quantities. So, the base year prices, we call it as PO and the base year quantity, we call it as QO. So, we have here. So, in the next uh, slide, we have the uh, table for that. Now, when we calculate, what is the formula for Fisher's price index number? So, Fisher's index number 
PFO1 will be equal to root of sigma P1 QO divided by sigma PO QO into sigma P1 Q1 divided by sigma PO Q1 into 100. So, this is the formula for Fisher's ideal index number. So, we will have to calculate P1 QO P O Q O P 1 Q 1 P O Q 1. So we have to do and then we have to take the root of them and then we have to multiply it by 100. Now here in this table we have the P O Q O. So P O Q O. P O Q O means price into quantity of the base here. So 6 into 50. 300, uh, 2 into 10, 200, 4 into 6, 240, 10 into 30, 300, 8 4 is a 320. Then P1 QO, so 100 into 50, 500, 100 into 2, 200, 6 into 6, 360, 12 3 is a 360, 12 4 is a 480. Next P1 Q1, next 10 into 56, 560, 2 into 120, 240, 6 into 60 is 360, 12 into 24, 288 and 432. So, when we add all this, we get these numbers. Next, POQ1, PO into Q1, 6 into 56, it comes up to 336, then 2 into 120, 240, 4 into 60, 240, then Next, 10 into 24, 240, 8 into 36, 288. So, we get these numbers. So, P, O, Q, O. This is the total here. The total is this. So, sigma P, O, Q, O equals 1, 3, 6, 0. Now, sigma P, 1, Q, 1 equals 1, 9, double, 0. Then, sigma P1 Q1 equals 1880. Sigma P O Q1 equals 1344. Now, with the help of this, we have to calculate the Fisher's index number. So, we will calculate. I have already written the formula for Fisher's index number. So, we will calculate the index number here. So, P F O 1 equals root of P1 QO. What is P1 QO? 1900. 1900 divided by POQO. POQO is 1360. 1360 into next one is P1 Q1. 1880. 1880 divided by P O Q 1 1344 1344 into 100. So this will be equal to root of So, we have the last year's index number here as 139.79. So, first thing is we have to calculate the POQO, then P1QO, then P1Q1, POQ1. So, we have all the values we need to find out the Fisher's index number. So, Fisher's index number is 139.79. Now, they have also asked whether to prove that whether we ha can have the factor reversal test and the time reversal test. So, let us see what is this time reversal test here. Now, in this time reversal test, we have to see whether the PO1 into QO1 will be equal to 1. So, here the test is whether PO1 into QO1 equals 1, whether we should get the value 1. So, when in order to find this, so we will have to have a combination of both the values. So, whatever is the price index number, 
So the same way into quantity index number. Quantity index number means Q1 will come first and then the price. So we will have to prove that the P01 and the Q1 O1 is equal to 1. Now we already know that P01 equals P01 equals root of 1900 1, 1, 0, 0 by 1360 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1360 by 1900. So this will be equal to, so when we put all this under one root, this gets deleted. So P01 into Q01 equals 1. So it is root of 1, it is 1. Now what is this factor reversal test? So in the factor reversal test, we will have to just reverse the factors. First we write the Q1 and then the P1. So it will be, write the FRT here. So in this factor reversal test, we have the first one is the QO. When it is QO, uh, when we find out the quantity index number, the Q1 will be first and then we have the price. Sigma Q1 PO divided by Sigma QO PO into Sigma Q1 P1 by Sigma QO P1. Now in the price index number, we have P1 QO PO QO P1 Q1 PO Q1. So when we multiply both, we should get sigma p1 q1 and sigma p o q o. So when we substitute the values here, I am getting root of 1880 by 360. So that is equal to sigma p1 q1 divided by sigma p o q o. Now the next problem is calculate the price index for the following by the simple aggregate method. Now simple aggregate method means, so it will be just like P01 equals root of sigma P1 by PO into 100. So P01 will be when you add all this. So this becomes the PO, this is the P1. So P1 equals 205, PO equals 175 into 100. So P01 will be equal to. So when we simplify this 205 by 175 into 100, we get the index number as 117.14. Now the next one, consumer price index. So consumer price index is also called the cost of living index. They are designed to measure the average change over time in the price paid by ultimate consumer for a specified quantity of goods and services. So this consumer price index, it or it is also called as the cost of living index. It is the average change over time in the price paid by ultimate consumer for a specified quantity of goods and services. So there are two methods of constructing index numbers. The first one is the aggregate expenditure method. Second one is the family budget method. Now let us calculate the index number using the aggregate expenditure method. So in this we have a problem here. So here in the first column they have given us the items A, B, C, D, E, F. Then we have the quantity, then the P, O and the P1. Now we will have to calculate the index number for this. So first thing is we will have to know what is the formula for consumer price index. So this will be equal to root of sigma P1 QO divided by sigma P O Q O into 100. In other words, it is nothing but the last year's formula. So CPI will be equal to sigma P1 QO. So it is 4362.5. PO QO is 3505.5 
into 100. So, CPI will be equal to So, the CPI is 124.46. Now, what is the conclusion we have to do? So, conclusion means this 24, the prices have risen by 24.46 percent. So, this is the conclusion we have to write. So, when we have a comparison between the price and the quantity of the base year and the price of the current year, we get an inference that prices have risen by 24.46 percent. Now, if we have to calculate the same problem in family budget method, then how do we do? The first method is the simple aggregate method. We have calculated the cost of living index numbers. Now in this family budget method, we have the cost of living index number as sigma PW by sigma W. So we will have to see what are the values here. So in this, uh, we have this uh, QO which will be taken as the weights for the family budget method we consider the weights as the quantity of the base here and then we have to calculate P. So what is P here? P equals P1 by PO into 100. So, so we, they have given us the PO and the P1 here. So, we will have to calculate P for each of these items here. Now, here we have P equals P1 by PO. So, that will be equal to 36 by 4 into 100. Next will be uh, 48 by 16 into 100. Next. 50 by 25 into 100. The next one will be 48 by 36 into 100. So, next when we simplify this, it will be 4 nines. That will be 900. Then this will be equal to 300. Then 200. Then 4 9s are 4 12s are 3 3s are 3 4s are. So, this will be equal to 400 by 3. Then the next one will be 56 by 64 into 100. So, this will be equal to 4 1s are 4 6s are. 4 1s are 4 4s are 2 8s are 2 7s are 700 by 8 and the next one is 55 by 21 into 100 that will be 5500 divided by 21 so when we simplify this this we get So, we have the P of all the commodities here. So, this is for A, B, C, D, E and F. So, I will write it down here. So, P values will be for A, B, C, D, E, F. So, this will be for A it is 900. For B, it is 300. For C, it is 200. For D, it is 400 divided by 3. 133.33. For E, it is 87.5. For F, it is 261.5. 90. So, this is the P column and next we have the weights here. 
So the weights will be 18, 12, 10. 18, 12, 10, 8, 7, 5. So these are the weights. Now we add the P into W. P into W will be 18 into 900. 16,200. Next. 12 into 300. 12 into 300. 3,600. 200 into 10. 2,000. 133.3 into 8, 1066.4, then 87.5 into 7, 612.5, 261.9 into 5, 1309.5. So, we add all these values here. So, when we add the W values, it will be 30, 40, 48, 48 plus 7 will be 7 plus 5, 12, 12 plus 8, 20, 30, 30, 60. Now, when you add all this, we get 16,200 plus 3,600 plus 2,000 plus 1066. 24,788.4. Now we find out the cost of living index number. So that will be sigma PW. So 24,788.4 divided by 60. So this will be equal to 24,788. 0.4 divided by 60. 413.14. So, as per the family budget method, we have this index value as 413.14. So, we have just completed the family consumer price index number based on the expenditure method and also the family budget. With this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.